All right, so we're going to talk about what to do if you have calcification in your arteries. I've done other videos on this. There's a really good test that you can do to determine if you do have calcium in your arteries. In fact, it's one of the best predictors of mortality. So I put a link down below for more information than that if you are not familiar with that test. But this video is on a protocol that I would recommend to help undo the calcification in your arteries. Of course, the best thing is to prevent it, but what do you do if you actually have calcium buildup in the arteries? All the things that I'm going to talk about are not meant to replace your medical care. Um, just do your own research. I put some links down below for every single thing I'm going to talk about. The first natural compound is allicin, which happens to be the phytonutrient in garlic. Some real interesting research on the association of allicin and decreased artery calcification in animals. So if you have a pet with a calcified coronary artery, start feeding them garlic immediately. Number two, butyrate. Now, what is butyrate? Butyrate is a compound that your microbes in your gut make when you feed the microbes fiber. And I'm going to recommend vegetable fiber, but it is actually a type of fat. It's a small chain fatty acid that's produced in your gut from microbes from vegetable fiber. And that too is associated with a decreased risk of artery disease. Now, number three, lycopene. This is a phytonutrient in tomatoes. It's in a lot of other vegetables. And there's some real interesting data uh, of showing how lycopene can decrease the thickness of the wall of your arteries and also decrease the stiffness. And this is why sometimes you'll see some crazy claims that, oh, now you can have ketchup and it's going to decrease your risk for heart disease because ketchup has lycopene. Of course, we know that's um, not going to happen. Now, also, if you add olive oil when you're cooking, it can greatly increase the amount of lycopene up to 82%. And that is because like other phytonutrients, lycopene is a fat soluble compound which means it requires bile and adding more oil to the diet can greatly enhance the absorption. All right, number four, omega-3 fatty acids. This would be in fish oils, definitely cod liver oil, which I recommend more than fish oils. I mean, we know that omega-3 is good for so many things, but its main action in relationship to your arteries is the decrease in inflammation, but it can also increase the risk of getting a clot. Now on the flip side, the omega-6 fatty acids increase stiffness of the arteries and it can increase the clotting factor. And when I'm talking about omega-6, I'm talking about the soy oil, the corn oil, the canola, the cotton seed. Now there is one type of omega-6 that is very friendly to your arteries and it doesn't increase inflammation. And that would be called GLA or gamma linolenic acid. This would be like borage oil, black currant seed oil, evening primrose oil. So GLA can help decrease inflammation. It can help decrease thickness in your arteries. It can also decrease the plaque formation in your arteries. I put some links down below. Very, very interesting. All right, number six, vitamin K2. You probably knew this was coming. I would recommend getting the MK7 version and I would consume about 300 micrograms every single day. Now, what does vitamin K2 do? It activates a certain protein that inhibits calcium from forming in the arteries. So that's a very, very important one. Number seven, tocotrienols. Tocotrienols is one form of the vitamin E complex, and it's about 50 times stronger than to cough rolls, and it can greatly decrease inflammation in your arteries. It can decrease something called C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory uh, compound by 40%. And lastly, and most importantly, is doing whatever you can to decrease and reverse insulin resistance. There's a direct relationship between having insulin resistance and having calcification 
in your arteries. And so a lot of these other remedies are not going to work unless you also correct insulin resistance. How? If you're new to my channel, I put the link down below. You need to do healthy keto and definitely intermittent fasting for a period of time to start making changes. But it's my opinion that the combination of addressing insulin resistance with tocotrienols, with K2, with allicin and omega-3 are probably the most important things you can do. And these other compounds are, are also good, but I think using them more as a secondary approach. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Before you go, if you have a question about a product or you're new to keto and you want to know how to begin keto, or you're on keto and you need a debug because it's not going as smooth, I have a keto consultant standing by to help you. This is just for the people in the U.S. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to answer everyone's call. But I put the number down below so you can call and get some help.